Right, today I'm going to look at this Xtool AnyScan. This is the A30M version. This has been sent to me for the purpose of review at no cost by Xtool. Now this is a OBD2 type diagnostic scanner for vehicles. If I can get the packet open. So you've got the actual unit itself, this is it. Runs off Bluetooth, got some indicators on the end there, tell you what's going on. And it's also got a screen here which will tell you the battery voltage, or at least the OBD2 voltage. I've actually played with this a bit already on a couple of vehicles. One thing I found is that you can't see that display. <laughs> In one vehicle, it's up behind a panel, like the, the sockets here, and it's like all you see is this bit, you don't see the top part. And the other vehicle, it's that way up. Same deal though, you can only see the bottom half. So that display is kind of in one place, it should really be down here so you can see it. <laughs> That's that. Now we also get this card which has got the serial number and the activation code on it for the actual device. So you have to make sure that you've got those. Um, don't lose that card. Write it down somewhere, take a picture of it, whatever you need to do. Don't lose that card. It's okay initially, once you activate on your device, you're going to be using like your iPhone or or Android phone or a tablet of some kind, it, it just works. You just need to have an initial setup on the application and then it will work and you don't have to do it again. But if you ever have, have to reinstall the app or you get a new phone or something like that, then you're going to need this again so don't lose that. It's quite important. I've got some video recorded already of me in a car doing some diagnostics type, just looking through the menus and stuff like that. So we go to that. Now fortunately the audio isn't very good. I was doing a screen recording on the phone and the quality is not very good I'm afraid so I apologize for that in advance I didn't really want to sit down and record all that again so I'm afraid it's not wonderful audio quality apologies for that anyway let's get to that footage all right so in the car this is a 2004 Toyota Ipsum it's quite an old car it has very few options in the OBD2 system from when I've been trying other devices so we're going to plug this in here and I'm going to do a screen recording on the phone so we'll see how this comes out and uh, see what options we get for this one. So here we are on the Bluetooth screen on my phone. I've already plugged the unit into the OBD2 port and just here I've got the A30M. So we're going to select that to enable it. You will hear it beep maybe. So we've got the X2 app here. It's the X2 AnyScan app. When you go into the settings, we've got lots of languages on the right hand side here, lots of languages to choose from there. Then we've got units, you can set those up. You've got Bluetooth, workshop information for the reports. Then there is the firmware information, which allows you to see the actual firmware and see what your current version is. And of course the app version itself as well. So we've got updates. Now this is a bit weird, this one. I've, I've done updates on here before. But they don't seem to go away. I've done a whole bunch of like over 100, and this, I've still got some which keep coming back up, which is a bit weird. So you got reports next. That shows you any past history you've already done. So if you've already done a diagnostic and generated a report for that, um, you can see it in the history, and then you can go back and look at it. You can email it to yourself or review it or whatever. we also got data playback, I'm not quite sure what that's referenced to. So the special functions, obviously only ones that apply will be what's installed on your vehicle. There's lots of options there, but not all of them will actually work on your vehicle. So now we've got diagnostics and auto scan. Now auto scan doesn't work very well with this vehicle. It's always struggles. Other tools I've used haven't worked with it either. So we'll see how we go. And as you can see, it didn't work. On this particular vehicle, auto scan doesn't work. It takes a while to fail, which is also quite annoying. I wish it failed sooner. You're sitting here waiting for it. So we go to diagnostics. In this case, you've got different regions, so you can choose like America, Asia, 
Europe, Australia, and China. Um, and you've got the different vehicles in each one of these. In my case, I'm currently doing this on a Toyota. So in this case, it's a Japanese vehicle, so Asian. So with the manual selection. Now, once again, this is communicating with the OBD2 dongle. Now, what I don't understand is why it's doing that. Should it just not be giving you a list of vehicles from the range that's available, rather than trying to negotiate with the dongle and then, then give you an option to choose a vehicle? So there we go. So this is a list of Toyotas in here. There's quite a few of them. Um, this particular vehicle is an Epsom. Now, interestingly, on the VIN plate, it says this is an ACM version, but when I did the reports, it comes back as an AMA, which is a bit interesting. So now we go to automatic scan, and it will go through and find everything which is installed in the vehicle and anything that returns a code, whatever. Um, we'll check those out. So it's finished the scan. One thing that does catch my eye right now is that it's got cruise control showing up. This vehicle doesn't have cruise control. So we'll click on diagnostic and look at the actual details. So as you can see, it's reported a whole bunch of data there, but it's not actually active it seems maybe the modules installed but it's not actually hooked up and not active maybe it's just present maybe it's built into something else i don't know but let's look at the engine diagnostics now yeah this also takes a long time it will sort of go in stages and it keeps requiring the obd it's a bit strange the way it works So there you go, it's loaded now. So as you can see, we've got some data here. I've got the engine running, the air conditions on, that sort of stuff, because it's getting into summer now, it's getting quite warm. So I'm sitting in the car, obviously. I want to keep quite cool. So let's have a look through the actual data. Now as it loads, it, as you scroll through, it loads. So it only actually loads the data on screen as you scroll down. So you may scroll and see there's nothing there, and then it will appear. So um, sometimes a bit of patience if you're trying to scroll quickly. And obviously you can read trouble codes. This vehicle doesn't have any right now. It's behaving, so... So let's exit out of that. Now it will prompt for the report information if you want to add some extra information there to include in the report. So I'm going to put the mileage in this just to complete it, just to show you how to do that bit. And so the mileage on this one is 283.068 kilometers. So that'll save it in the report. Now you've got general OBD type scans as well, so we'll sit down and do one of these as well, 
and we'll see how that behaves in case it works. And as you can see, it failed. This particular vehicle, as I said, because it's an old one, it doesn't always work. In fact, very few things actually work in this vehicle. Let's go back into special functions and see if there's anything we can look at here. I think we can use the suspension one. Have a look at that. Again, we need to scroll down and find the Ipsum, and we've got to choose AMA again. So as you can see, there's no special functions showing up. Checking the DTCs, there's no errors for that either. So anyway, that gives you an idea of what this thing can do. Um, I've only probably scratched the surface of it. But I haven't seen anything for doing customizations. So again, thanks for that. I've reviewed other OBD2 scanners in the past. It's not a main thing for me. It's just a curiosity. So I've got some other videos down below there. Maybe I'll link to that at the end screens maybe. Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel. And there's a subscribe button over here if you want to subscribe and see more stuff. I don't do many of these sorts of things. I'm not an automotive guy. But I thought it might be an interesting thing to share. Catch you later.